Okay, that's the explanation of the ferromagnetic, the origin of ferromagnetism in our classical physics. Okay, uh, before moving to the next view graph, uh, if you have any question about the uh, ferromagnetism, yeah, this is a good time to ask the questions. Please ask questions. Any questions? Okay. Yeah, if you don't have, uh, let me move on. <clears throat> okay, so we just learned about the ferromagnetism, and now I'm going to talk about the antiferromagnetism. Antiferromagnetism means the atomic moment in a substance are equal, but they are opposite direction, as like. Uh, shown in this cartoon. Here, the blue one and the red one, they have the same amount of moment, but they have a different direction. So these spins prepared for anti-parallel alignment instead of the parallel alignment. So in this line, they are parallel, but the other line, they are anti-parallel. And again, again, again. So total amount of moment of the anti-parallel motor is almost zero. Okay. The concept of Wagonon, I will gonna explain later, not now. It's a little bit complex, uh, complicated. It requires a lot of time to uh, understand the spin wave physics. Yeah, I will uh, give it about uh, maybe uh, months after or two months after. Yeah, it's uh, almost uh, uh, at, um, yeah. I, it, the lecture for the spin wave is scheduled. Uh, after maybe seven or eight weeks after. Okay, but now just to remember that this classical physics is not good enough to understand the, the, the experimental observation, okay? And, okay, so in a ferromagnet, and the, sorry, anti-ferromagnet, there's no uh, net marked moment. So, uh, when you apply the strong field, the magnetic moment try to uh, align to the field direction, as we already explained. So, let's say we applied field in this direction. Then, the pin try to align to, to this field direction. But this guy, this guy, try to align to this direction. But this, those two spins, as a strong coupling, they prefer the anti-parallel direction. So when you apply, let's say, if you have a two different direction field, uh, this is the magnetic moment, and this is the field direction, they are try to align to the field direction, but they are still coupling between them. They didn't like this direction. So it's very, it requires very large field to align the field direction. In a moderate field, the, uh, the mount moment, uh, induced mount moment of the antiparamount is very, very small. So usually it's uh, ignorable. It's not uh, important. So technically, this antiparamount material is just the same to the normal material. So in the sense of the uh, application, it's not very useful so far. But Nowadays, there are many applications of exchange uh, antiferromagnetic material called uh, by the exchange bias in a modern magnetic devices. Yeah, this is the another important topic. And also nowadays, there are many interesting physics is found in a antiferromagnetic material called antiferromagnetic spintronics. There are many many uh, interesting physics inside of the antiferromagnetic material. But it also requires uh, uh, many knowledge about uh, antiferromagnetic material, not, not only antiferromagnetic material, but also uh, more um, 
very concurrent physics. So I'm gonna explain it later. It's almost the end of the, my lecture. And also, usually the antifinitive material has a very uh, complex temperature dependence. So uh, they have a they have a, some strong coupling, and uh, the random motion is dependent on summer. But depends on the temperature, the, uh, the antifinitive material behave like a uh, paramagnetic, and sometimes they have a ferromagnetism, sometimes they have a helical uh, magnetism. So usually, the temperature dependence is very complex. Okay, uh, complex. Okay, so let's move on another one. The uh, there is another material called the ferry magnet, not the ferro. Sorry, yeah, not the ferro. Ferry. What's the meaning of the ferry? It's quite similar to the antiferromagnetic material. There, there are two uh, spins aligned. Opposite direction, but the mild moment are not the same. So that means there is two spins, but different sign. They prefer uh, the opposite direction. Then we have a total net moment of this amount. So in ferry magnet, it looks like a magnet. Then if you apply the magnet field. They behave just like the ferromagnet, but goes with this detailed spin structure. The temperature dependence shows very very complicated behavior. And also, there are many uh, material forms the ferry magnet, not the ferromagnet. So you know, nature we can fi easily find the many kind of light or garnet and perovskite and some alloys. They are all from the ferry. So actually, the ferry material is more of uh, uh, there are much more ferry magnet compared to the ferro magnet. So it's also technically very important. And here I'm going to explain this temperature dependence. Here we already know the magnet moment. As a function of temperature, they behave something like this. But for the magnet, as a uh, sum of two magnetic moment, so if one substance have this temperature behavior, and the other one, so let's say this behavior. So total magnetic moment is. Something like this. Yeah, that's the simple. So that's the case. Something like this. But yeah, let's think about that. If one is something like this, and mm, yeah, the other one is a uh, Not easy to draw. Yeah, something like this. So in that case, in a low temperature, this is large, and in a high temperature, this is larger. So they be able the total moment be able something like this. Yeah, this is the case. So they are, the magnetic moment are draw and almost zero at certain temperature, but we increase temperature again, the magnetic moment increase again. So in this temperature, the magnetic moment for one substance and the other one are exactly the same, so they are cancelled out. So they are they behave just like antiferromagnet at this sudden temperature. That's what we call spontaneous, uh, sorry, compensate. Compensate temperature. That is also very important property in a ferromagnetic material, 
And there are many applications using this composite temperature, especially in a modern spintronics. Okay. So, so I'm gonna explain it later. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll just uh, say too many times, I'll explain later. Because this is the introduction part. Okay, so question. Actually, not uh, all of them. As you see here, this guy has a no compensation temperature. Okay. Yeah, it depends on the mount moment and the temperature dependence of the mount moment of the two uh, substances. If they are uh, quite different one, I already said, large mount moment but small QG temperature, one material, and the other one has a small mount moment and uh, large QG temperature. So in that case, uh, we have uh, some kind of compensation temperature. But uh, if you have a, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, such a behavior, then there's no compensation temperature. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, before I uh, finish this part, I'm going to explain the diamantism again. Diamantine means when you apply the field, the mount moment are negative. Not uh, parallel to the field duration, but anti parallel to the field duration. So let's recall the length law. This one is the you may learn in a fundamental course. If we have a current loop here and we move the formant magnet to cross the link. And there is a some certain amount of the induced uh, current. And also when we pull down the magnet from the displaced to outside, you know, there is some another direction of the induced magnetic moment or induced current. The direction of this current is always prevent the motion of the this magnet. That's the kind of uh, diamagnetism. So in this moment, try to reduce the motion of the uh, permanent magnet in this length slope. It's quite similar. If we have uh, this kind of angular motion or current, we already learned this is the moment of the, this form. When we apply this turn field, this current is getting smaller. So this magnet moment is going down. So that means this total magnet moment are decrease as a function of the field. So this means the susceptibility is negative. And this value is uh, also very small, like 10 to minus 5 something. So the effect of diamagnetism is very, very small for the moderate field. But if we apply a very strong field, this is not uh, negligible. And also, if there is no other contribution, no other contribution like a paramagnetism, sometimes you can easily observe the, this diamagnetism. Okay. So, this diamagnetism is uh, existing in all materials because of the orbital motion of the electron, electrons. Usually, it's very small. So, we, I already mentioned this value. But in a superconductor, we have a very large value minus one because of the is bad, uh, because of the macroscopic orbital motion of the uh, pair in a superconductor. That's what we call the Meissner effect. Okay, and in a, um, this dimension observed in a zero angular momentum and the spin momentum are required. So usually they are found in a crude shell electron structure like uh, monoatomic gases and poly, uh, polyatomic gases like uh, H2 or N2 and some ionic solid, NaCl. 
or uh, some covalent bonding materials like a sil carb uh, carbon, silicon, germanium. That means the diamond or diamagnetism. And also many organic compounds, they are diamagnetism. But in this class, this uh, diamagnetism is not uh, very not uh, important at all. So usually we uh, didn't mention it again. Okay. Okay. Now um, let's move on to the next one. Next one, sure. So far, do you have any question? Yeah, if you guys has a uh, uh, type, just a Y. Yeah, I wanna check uh, you. You are listening. Please type Y. Because of this online lecture, it's very difficult to catch your response. So sometimes I'm going to ask you, uh, type just Y. Okay. Okay. So now, uh, now, now we uh, learn about the origin of the magnetism in a classical physics. So um, before going to the more details, I want to just briefly review the quantum mechanics. And uh, this basic quantum mechanics is just uh, uh, for the uh, very fundamental level, like a fundamental physics level. So it, I'm going to speed up. OK. So I already mentioned that the origin of the uh, magnetism is spin. So and the, uh, the spin is a pure quantum mechanical quantity. So we need a quantum mechanics. OK. And also, uh, the band theory is required to understand the many uh, physics related to the spin tronics. So I'm going to uh, try to explain the necessary part of the quantum mechanics and the band theory very briefly. Okay. So this is the contents of the base of quantum mechanics. And if you uh, never heard the quantum mechanics, it's not easy. But I believe all students in this class are already familiar with quantum mechanics, isn't it? Okay. So let's move on. So uh, the quantum mechanics was born because of the failure of the classical physics. There is uh, uh, four famous uh, failure of the classical physics. They open just open up the uh, quantum mechanics. You may heard about the black body radiation. And uh, in this graph, uh, this is the wavelength of the measured uh, radiation, and this is the intensity. And um, in a black body radiation, by the classical uh, physics, they assume they obtain this kind of curve. So that means if you increase the temperature, then uh, the the radiation wavelength is the, the intensity of the higher, uh, the, the larger wavelength is going down. But in other way, in other limit, they found this behavior. But they cannot explain this experimental observation. So the Planck just assumed the quantization of the uh, energy of the photon. They introduced, Planck introduced the concept of the photon. So that means the the light is just particle. So is that is just a, uh, uh, 
Actually, at that time, it's the uh, end of 19th century, people believe light is the electromagnetic wave. So the concept of the, the photon, the particle of the light, particle theory for the light, are, are not acceptable. But without that kind of explanation, there's no way to explain this experimental observation. And also, the photoelectron effect, which one means, the, they also support the, the particle theory for the light. So as you know, the Albert Einstein got the Nobel Prize, his first Nobel Prize because of the, this photoelectron effect. And also, the Compton scattering is uh, if you have uh, some X-ray and if you have uh, some uh, solid, the scattered X-ray has a different wavelengths. And this uh, change of the wavelengths also uh, can be explained by the uh, particle theory for the light. And also, when we people observe the spectrum of the hel uh, nitrogen, classical physics explain this spectrum must be continuous. But the experimental observation, as you see here, they have a, a very a well defined spectrum, this, con, uh, this continuous spectrum. So people try to explain this experimental observation by the classical physics, they all failed. And as you know, the Bohr explained this spectrum by the quantization of the electron energy. So people now start to confuse the light is the photon or electromagnetic wave, what is the correct answer? Just the bone of the uh, quantum physics. And experimentally and uh, theoretically, people try to uh, suggest the wave-particle duality. The duality means the photon, the, the light is not only wave, not only particle. They have uh, two properties. And also, De Bruyne suggests uh, uh, metal wave, if we have a moment of the P, momentum of the P, then they have a uh, wavelength of lambda. So this is the Debray wavelength. So the light or any particle like an electron is not uh, neither particle nor wave. So this is the good example. This is the depression pattern of X-ray, and this depression pattern means the wave nature. Because of the wave, uh, X-ray is a wave, they form such kind of uh, depression patterns. But we can obtain a quite similar depression pattern by the electron beam. So that means the electron has a wave nature. And what's the meaning of duality? I want to explain in this way. Let's think about such kind of a cylinder. Or a can, a drink can. Yeah, we know this. This is the cylinder. But if we take a look, this cylinder in this side, in the in the top view or bottom view, it looks just looks like a circle. And if we take the side view of the cylinder, it looks like just rectangle. So let's say this is the particle, and this is wave shape. Then what's the reality of this cylinder? They, this cylinder, the truth of the, this cylinder is neither particle or wave. This is just a cylinder, but we don't have such name. So we call this material as a property of the particle and wave together. That's the meaning of the duality. This is what I understand. Yeah, in a quantum <coughs> mechanics, there are many new concepts are introduced. That part is very difficult to understand. So sometimes don't just try to memorize and just uh, uh, yeah, just believe it. It's like a religion. It's very difficult to understand because we never lived in such a world. We can, uh, in a classical physics, we have uh, some feeling because we are living in a uh, real world, but in our know, quantum mechanics is far beyond our sense. 
So it's, we need a lot of mathematics to understand quantum mechanics. And also, uh, one of the important things is uncertainty principles. That is uh, produced, uh, claimed by the uh, Heisenberg. He uh, claimed that the position, the uncertainty of the position and uncertainty of the momentum, when you multiply it, they should be larger than certain number, the h over 2. And it's the same to the time and the energy. What's the meaning? If we have a particle of the momentum P, which is the multiplication of the mass M, the velocity V, and we have a, a double wave length here. So, by the duality, we can introduce to uh, represent this particle, we need such kind of wave packet. So, if the this delta x means we don't know exact portion of a particle when we describe by this wave packet. And actually, the, um, so this wave packet can be described by the sum of many, many, many wavelengths. This is the kind of field transfer. So, for the exact x means the delta is zero, we need infinite number of the lambda. So that means lambda is not uh, well defined and the momentum is not well defined. So when you're going to delta x is zero, delta p going to infinite. Okay. So let's say, uh, Reverse case. For single lambda, we have a such kind of wave, okay? Then delta is going to infinite. So single single lambda means that delta p is going to zero, delta is going to infinite. So in that case, for the single lambda, we cannot define the position of the particle. So when you sum up these two extreme case, we can obtain delta x multiplied delta p must be larger than certain number. And as you know, when I explain this part, I borrow the concept of Fourier transform. So some people said uncertainty principle is not physical law. That's the mathematical one. So that's a very important one. You know, may, uh, you may know about the concept of the multiverse. Multiverse means there are another uni universe can be exist. Well, the physical constant is quite different from ours. So even though the physics law may apply in other universe, but the Physical constant are different means it's totally different world. But still, this uncertainty principle, which one is the mathematical expression, should be same in other world. Yeah, mathematics is stronger than physics. So there are many uh, physical beliefs like um, there is no um, particle can be faster than the speed of light. That's the basic principle of the uh, relativistic theory. Yeah, we believe it now, but nobody knows. Sometimes we can find other particles which one can be faster than the relativ relativistic, the, the, the speed of light. If you found the such particle, there are many questions required for the relativistic theory. Uh, yeah, we believe the Newton mechanics, but it turns out it's not true. So sometimes we uh, there is many chance the the physics the, the physics law is not uh, correct. There is some requirement for modification. But in a mathematics, there's uh, there is no way the the mathematics is incorrect. So this is quite different one. So the uncertainty principle 
is very strong one. So they, they should be followed that uh, principle. Okay, so um, you may heard about that uh, the as a result of a quantum mechanics, many uh, strange things can be realized. Let's think about that. There is one coin inside of the well, or maybe in cup. Can it escape? Yeah, in a classical physics, no, never. In a classical physics, but in a quantum mechanics, this possibility, the coin is going out the well without any. Uh, touch. Yeah, let's think about that. Uh, if we have an electron in a potential well, in a classical physics, there's just uh, uh, the, the the electron can exist only inside of the potential energy, potential well. But in a uh, quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, we have a finite probability of the tunneling. So let's back to this coin problem. Actually, coin consists of many, many atoms and electrons, Avogadro numbers. Then some electron actually can be exist outside of the this well in some times, even though the probability is going to zero. But not zero. That's the important. Even though the possibility is very, very, very small, the small means like uh, I don't know what number, but they are still not zero. So if you take a look, this coin for long, long, long means the the universe was born and die and born and again, again, again. You may take a ten to Blah, 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 year, then you may have a chance to see this coin exist outside of the uh, well. Yeah, so it's uh, actually not uh, possible, but if you uh, think about this electron motion inside the potential well, such kind of tunneling has a uh, quite large probability. This tunneling concept is very important. So when you classical uh, physics, if you have uh, this barrier, high of the H, and if you have a ball of mass M, in order to send this particle to here, you need kinetic energy and least larger than the potential energy of this well. If they are smaller than the potential energy. This mass M cannot be here. It's the, there's no chance. It never happens. But in a quantum mechanics, even though the kinetic energy is smaller than the potential energy, sorry, this is the, uh, not the case for quantum mechanics. Let's say just the potential energy. There is certain probability electron can be exist in the other side of the potential ray. That's what we call tunneling. Okay. Because of that's, that's the because of the wave nature of the electron. Okay, so uh, this is the form of the Schrodinger equation. The meaning of the solving the Schrodinger equation means just uh, Solving a partial differential equation. Mathematically, that's not so difficult. But the interpretation of the solution requires a lot of uh, physical uh, understanding. Yeah. And also, in a real atomic system, this potential is not so easy to handle it. So, you solving this Schrodinger equation, you need some assumption of the atomic potential, uh, that's the uh, kind of a uh, uh, technique for the band theory calculation. Okay. And what's the meaning of the wave function? Wave function means 
uh, actually the you know physically there's no meaning no meaning but when you take uh, taking the absolute value and uh, take the scale that means the probability of the uh, particle you get, uh, probability of the finding of particle you know small length delta x and uh, at the position x and the time t is equal to this form so total probability of the uh, finding of particle between certain region is given by this integral form and if you take the uh, full space of this integral it should be it should be one because the particle exists in somewhere so that's called the normalization conditions yeah the skew the uh, absolute value of the uh, wave function the physical meaning is uh, i believe all stunt are already familiar with that concept but the this part is also very important wave function has no physical meaning but in a mathematically mathematically the wave function is the orthogonal normal basis vector of the system that's the very important concept yeah, i'm gonna explain it later again and also uh, in many uh, solid state physics we represent wave function as a kind of vector, kind of vector. it's uh, called the bracket notation This plaque notation means uh, we handle the wave function as a kind of a basis vector of the system. This is very powerful representation you know, to understand many uh, physics in a solid state. So I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna explain it uh, briefly later. Okay. So uh, yeah. Let's think about that uh, the on electron in a potential well. If we have a infinite potential well, the electron is well confined in this potential well, and they form the standing wave. So we can obtain such kind of wave function. And for a given wave function, we can obtain the energy, quantized energy, in such uh, calculation. But we have a fine uh, potential well instead of the infinite one. We have a certain amount of penetration or the tunneling probability. So the wave level is, uh, the, the energy level is changed. Depends on the potential energy. Okay. So such tunneling is classically impossible, but uh, you know, quantum mechanically, it is very, very important. You know, spin is, I already mentioned about the TMR, means the tunneling magnetoid resistance. So, in this device, is one of the very important uh, devices in a spin -tronics. The tunneling is the basic principle. So, as you see here, in a particle energy is less than the classical one. This part is the classically forbidden region. They never be exist in this place. So the particle cannot penetrate here. But in a uh, quantum mechanics, we have an instant wave, and there is some finite probability of the particle out in in opposite side even though the the potential energy larger than the particle energy okay there is also important to uh, comment the, this is the reduced potential the, the probability but not the energy energy is the same energy is the same but the amplitude is decreased that means the existing pro the probability of the particle existing in this side is smaller and um, actually this total improbability can be explained by this exponential form and here the alpha 
is defined by the difference of the energy, the potential energy, and the, the particle energy. So that means if the uh, these two values are close, alpha is going to zero, that means uh, the tunnel probability is getting higher and higher. And if we, if this difference is larger, then alpha 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 is increased, alpha is increased, then the tunneling probability is going down. It's quite similar to the uh, light in an opaque material. If you have an opaque material, if it is thin enough, light can be penetrated. But in a, even though you have, you have the same opaque material, but they are very thick, then light cannot be translated. Or the darkness of opaque material is very, very high, then light cannot penetrate, even though it is very thin. It's quite uh, the mathematical expression is uh, identical. Okay, so this is the concept of the tunneling here. And the stern gala experiment, which was very, very important in a uh, 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 to explain the spins. We have uh, uh, some furnace here, and they heat the atoms, and they generate some atomic beam. And uh, yeah, they try to using the silver. The silver atoms are going to this way. And in this place, we have a very uh, well-designed magnet of this shape. So the magnet field here is very, very non-uniform, very inhomogeneous magnet field. So classically, the atom, silver atom must be spread out this form. This is classical expected result. But they found the atomic beam is existing only these two points. Yeah. If we have a multi moment here, the, the silver atoms, they, if they are classical one, they can have any direction randomly. So when we have an inhomogeneous field, they feel the force uniformly. So that means they should be spread out. But experimental observation tell us there is only two points in the maximization direction are only two up or down. That's the meaning of the uh, the, the finding of the spins. So this is very important experimental observation. And they got the way to us. Okay. And um, by the solving the delay equation, the delay equation means quantum mechanics with the relativity. It's not uh, exactly the same one, but uh, yeah, it's uh, quite uh, similar one, yeah. Yeah, when you're solving the uh, delay equation, which one, including the electricity effect in a quantum mechanics, in order to obtain the solution of the delay equations, we need uh, some physical quantity called the spin. So when you're solving this delay equation, you obtained uh, four different wave functions, and those two are corresponding to the electron, those two are for the positron. And one is the spin up and the other one spin down. So we need four solutions to obtain the delay equation, the solution of the delay equations. So when we uh, explain the spins in a classical way, they assume the rotating 
spill, charged spill, and we obtain the magnetic moment of uh, this charged spill, uh, then the magnetic moment value is not uh, something like this, not the mu b. But with the the delay equation, we can obtain this magnetic moment, and with the this magnetic moment, you can explain this experimental deep observation. So thing is a real one. And in many physics, you don't need to understand such physics. Just you assume the electron spin is, we assume just the uh, electron is the small particle with the right moment of this amount. And just the concept of rotating spin is not uh, correct in you know, a quantum mechanics, but classically, that's each part to understand. So many times we just assume this kind of uh, critical rotation of the spins. We don't need it in many cases, but uh, we just keep in mind the, the nature of a spin is came from the quantum mechanics plus the relativity. Without the relativity, we cannot include the spin. And also, one of the very important Physical principle is called the Pauli exclusion principle. Pauli exclusion principle tells us no two identical phenomenon may occupy the same quantum state simultaneously. So the electrons and protons and neutrons they cannot be used to, uh, in the same energy state, same quantum state simultaneously. That means if one particle occupies some quantum state, then no other particle cannot be there. Okay. And also, total wave, fun wave function symmetry for the electron must be anti symmetry. So that's the nature of the phenomenon. For the boson, the total symmetry should be symmetry, not the anti symmetry. So, with this uh, statement, you can easily find uh, if we have a uh, particle one and two and form this kind of wave function. If those two states are the same, then it's going to zero. So uh, if this, those two particles are identical, then the wave function zero means the first part of the Pauli exclusion principles. So it's a very uh, important one also. Uh, I should stop here and it's time for the question. Please, um, question, ask questions. Yeah, it's time for the questions. Please, ask questions. You may use the microphone. And for the Korean student, you may ask a question. Uh, you may ask, uh, uh, ask a Korean question by the Korean. Okay, um, the coin the example of coin is too much extreme case, but uh, yeah, in reality, the coin, the electron belong to the coin can exist in outside the well. They have a certain amount of probability, not so small. But if you see the coin in outside of the uh, well, yeah, you need a Turning of all atoms, all atoms of the spins, all atoms of these coins together in outside, not the, only the electrons, but atoms also. So that means uh, the probability should be multiplied of the uh, such tunneling of each electron by other numbers. So they made a very, 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 very small probability, but not zero. It's too much uh, extreme case. But if you 
talking about a single electron, the, there is a certain amount of probability. So sometimes people uh, explain, you know, quantum mechanics, people can penetrate the wall. Yeah, it is possible, but the probability is too small. Okay, if the potential, the, the infinite wall, then uh, infinite, if the potential is infinite, then there's no uh, chance to penetrate. But if we have a finite uh, probability, finite uh, energy, then there is some uh, non-zero pro probability of the tunnel. Thanks, question. It is right. As you see here, uh, here, after tunneling, the energy level are same. So when you describe by the 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 wave, the wavelength is not only the amplitude are changing. So uh this amplitude is is this one so the probability of the particle existing in this side is getting smaller but uh, the energy itself is uh, doesn't change yeah you may think about this the if you have a light penetrate the opaque materials the wavelengths does change. The intensity are changed, okay? But the, the wavelengths itself are the same. In a ferromite material, uh, you don't need to uh, think about the uh, uh, yeah. When you uh, talk about the unicell, in a ferromitism, uh, the all mite moment of each atom are identical. So the unicell for the ferromite material are exactly the same to the atomic unicell. But in an anti ferromagnetism they uh, should contain at least two atoms in a unicell to describe the anti ferromagnetism If you uh, think about the helical magnet, that means the helical means the spin direction is rotated in take, and you take a certain amount of atomic number. So in that case, the unicell is very large. Uh, is that enough answer? Okay, for the June's uh, question, so this one, this exponential term here, the D is the thickness of this potential well. So the amplitude after the tunneling will be determined by the thickness and the alpha. If we write down this equation again, Oh. 
form. The lambda means the length scale of the uh, tunneling. So the alpha is the meaning of the inverse of the thickness, inverse of the length. So um, for the given lambda, if the thickness d is same to lambda, we have a decrease of the exponential minus one. So if we have a two lambda, we have a exponential minus two, something like this. So the m the wave function probability is, is decrease exponentially as a function of the thickness and the lambda or the alpha. And alpha is determined the uh, the energy difference energy difference of the potential energy and the particle. Okay. So if you want a higher probability after turning, you should increase the particle energy or decrease the potential energy. Uh, Stunt, did you guys take a look at the uh, homework? And if you uh, have uh, any question about the homework, please uh, let me know by Kakao Talk or email, or whatever. Okay. okay then uh, let's stop this lecture here. And in Wednesday, we're going to start from the first rule. Okay. Okay. So see you at Wednesday.